Hi, my name is Zoe and I'm a researcher at Watershed and Bristol and Bath Creative R&D. For the past year or so, I've been asking questions about how the creative sector in the Southwest can be more environmentally responsible. How can we work together to shift towards a green and inclusive sector? Specifically, I've been working with small creative businesses, organisations, collectives and freelancers to figure out what tools they might need to kickstart action. Smaller creative entities are an essential part of our creative ecology, but encounter very specific barriers and opportunities in climate action. The difficulty is, is the creative sector is so dazzlingly diverse. One week I'll be chatting to a theatre company who are unsure what to do with a tonne of fake fruit they've bought for a show, and the next I'll be chatting to a UX designer who works entirely online. There can be no one-size-fits-all approach here, which can make it hard to find useful guides for action. And this is what inspired the creation of this Creative Climate Action Toolkit. This toolkit is for small creative businesses, practitioners, freelancers who want to act on climate but might be unsure about where to start, feel overwhelmed, feel a bit confused or maybe lack the capacity to act. In this video, we will think about how you can become more environmentally responsible within your creative practice. It has four chapters. Chapter 1, Principles which can support inclusive and doable climate action. Chapter two, why small creative businesses and practitioners have so much to offer in the fight against climate change and the specific barriers they face. Chapter three, breaking down and broadening out climate action to be more expansive, flexible and doable. And chapter four, a guided exercise to help you map all potential actions and prioritize what to take forward. Chapter four comes with two additional resources for the guided exercise, the creative climate action checklist and the Creative Climate Action Worksheet linked in the description below. Please take your time to watch this video and go through the guided exercises with the checklist and worksheet linked in the description. The activities and resources are not intended to be prescriptive, but be a springboard for action and creative thinking. And if you've only got, say, 15 minutes on the bus, just have a flick through the Creative Climate Action Checklist linked in the description to see if anything inspires or feels relevant to you. So before we get started, there are a couple of things that have arisen time and time again, which I think are important to remember at the beginning of this journey. Climate action can feel really overwhelming. So the number one thing I want to say is you can't do everything at once. If you try and tackle your energy usage, the materials you use, your travel emissions all at once, you may burn out or not even start. When watching this video or reading through the Creative Climate Action Checklist, Consider which activities and areas excite you and feel achievable with the time, energy and resources you have. Number two, no shame is all about compromise. Climate action looks different for different people depending on your lived experience and identity. All decisions around sustainability require thoughtfulness and nuance to ensure they are inclusive and actionable. There is no perfect way of doing things yet. It's about weighing up your options, doing what is within your means, and not shaming yourself or others when some things are just not possible. Number three, think outside the box. This toolkit has been designed from consultation workshops with a broad range of creative practitioners and businesses. Not everything will be relevant to you, but the task in hand is figuring out what will work for you or how actions can be adapted to meet your needs. And number four, Individual change must always be held with systems change. While this toolkit is geared towards supporting smaller scale change, you will come up against systemic or industry barriers to action. For example, the fast pace of the theatre industry can make it difficult to buy second-hand props. We can't change everything as individuals, but small shifts in how we do things, in what we ask from collaborators, in how we choose to spend our money, does support the slow shift to a more environmentally conscious society. So throughout this project, something I've heard a lot is, well, it doesn't really matter, my business or practice or work is really small, so it wouldn't make much difference anyway. And yes, to tackle climate change, we need large scale system change, but we also need collective bottom up changes in how we do things as well. So here are three reasons why small creative practitioners and businesses are vital to tackling climate change. Number one, audience relationships. The creative industry has a unique role in tackling climate change because the smaller you are, the more unique and special your relationship with your audiences, customers and partners are. You're well versed in creating space for nuanced discussion, holding climate action together with inclusion, well-being and other crucial issues to navigate complexity. 
bringing people into the conversation. These relationships are so useful for telling the story of climate change in a way which resonates and inspires people. Number two, interdependency. The creative sector is highly interdependent and fast-paced, with the matrix of funders, collaborators, venues, audiences and customers coming together. While this could make change feel hard, this connectivity is actually amazing. Collective action, working, talking, imagining and experimenting with others is an essential part of changing our sector and world for the better. Number three, small is beautiful. The ability and dynamism of smaller creative businesses and practitioners to experiment, pilot new ways of doing things, test and reflect is unparalleled. Unlike larger creative businesses and organizations which often have boards, exec groups and reporting that all must be consulted, small entities are well positioned to try doing things differently now, which can be scaled up and adapted to build new pathways to action. While all of this is true, I do have to acknowledge that there are some very real and very specific challenges as well. Number one, diverse needs. As I said before, the creative sector encompasses such a broad range of activity. A one-size-fits-all approach just doesn't work. Everyone has unique needs, which makes most existing resources, reports and guides, etc. hard to navigate as a lot won't be relevant. It's important to recognize that you are the expert in your own practice. And this might mean taking more of an experimental and unique pathways forward. This toolkit is designed to help you figure out what works for you and to not be too prescriptive. Number two, interdependency. I know I said this was an opportunity, but it can definitely feel like a barrier, with this matrix of partners and collaborators making individual action feel impossible. Instead of having your own building, you may rent your workspace or work from home, blurring the lines between personal and work life. This can make what we think of as classic workplace climate action hard, with things like insulate your building, not really relevant. This toolkit takes a broader approach to climate action, considering how things like conversation can be vital in dynamic and interdependent creative work environments. Number three, capacity and funding. Whereas large organizations have a linear trajectory of climate action due to regular income, smaller creative entities shrink and grow and therefore action and capacity to act might change year to year or month to month. This toolkit encourages you to define your own ambition and timescales of action to be manageable with the resources, capacity and power you have. So when we think about climate action, we often think about solar panels, recycling and then stop there. And while these are both important, I want to talk about how climate action goes far beyond this. So this is the Creative Climate Action Venn Diagram. It illustrates the different ways we can think about what climate action might look like for creative practitioners and businesses. In the right circle, we have tangible emissions reductions, actions which reduce our greenhouse gas emissions right now. For example, recycling, turning off the lights, or installing solar panels. When we think about climate action, we tend to focus on these. They're very important, but definitely not the be all and end all. In the top circle, we have collective change. The creative sector has a unique relationship with audiences and communities, networks and institutions to create space for broader collective change and imaginative capacity for a different future. The fight against climate change is a marathon, not a sprint, and creating spaces for collective conversation, doubt, understanding, shifting ideas is essential. How are we communicating with our audiences and customers, our partners and collaborators, and our friends and funders? In the left circle, we have action enablers. Action enablers are activities that don't tangibly reduce emissions right now, but support long-term shifts in practice. They are shorter-term steps, for example, researching options of a sustainable website server before committing, or asking a like-minded business about the sustainable materials they use before investing. Researching, talking and testing take time and should be considered a necessary part of climate action. Breaking things down in this way acknowledges how important smaller steps are in figuring out what might work for you. You might have a goal of, say, reducing your emissions from touring by 50%. To do this, you would first need to commit to measuring your emissions from touring, which takes time, or researching what reduction methods might work best for you. Some examples of action enablers are research, so factoring in paid time to research choices to make the best, most informed, most sustainable decision. Fundraising, so generating additional income to support undertaking a particular activity or paying for people's time. Training, so an individual or team member taking time to undergo training in a specific area in relation to sustainability for that knowledge to become embedded into practice. Having conversations and knowledge sharing. Factoring in time to reach out, connect and have conversations with those who have a similar practice or business, with friends or partners. 
to overcome shared barriers and share solutions. Most importantly, sharing your successes and learnings with others is super important. Measuring. So taking time to track actions and measure emissions in certain areas of your overall practice or business. Capturing data to help you better understand your impact in different areas and guide reduction activities. Or testing. So space and time for trying and testing a new sustainable idea, product or way of working in practice to reflect and rework. So when something feels overwhelming or impossible, consider how some of these might break it down. The final section of this video gives you four guided activities to help break down what climate action might mean for you. You'll be asked to use the Creative Climate Action Checklist document and the Creative Climate Action Worksheet to help with this exercise. You will also need three colored pens. So task one, emissions mapping. Look at section A of the worksheet and take five minutes and write down all the emission sources and negative environmental impacts you can think of associated with the work you do in these different areas. Include all the emitting activities you know from your work so far, whether they're a part of your core practice or part of your wider influence. If you don't understand how an area might link to the work that you do, just skip it for now. Think about the buildings that you work in, the way that you communicate and travel, the materials you use and the people you work with. Where are you having a negative environmental impact? Task two, solutions mapping. Now take a moment in section B for each negative environmental activity consider. One, does this have a known solution? Even if it's not within your remit or it's something you're already doing. If so, jot it down in green below. Are you unsure how you would address this activity? Or are questions coming up for you as you think about it? Pop those questions down in orange. If it feels like addressing this impact is completely outside of your control, or there are barriers to addressing it, write this down as a block in red. Now take a second and revisit those orange and red notes. Are there small actions that you could do to work towards addressing them? If so, pop those small actions down in green. These might be as simple as having a conversation or Googling something you're unsure about. And if you can't think of anything, skip to the next task. Task three, solutions mapping. Now go through the Creative Climate Action Checklist linked in the description and use this as a prompt to look back over section B. As you're running through the prompts, consider what areas you might have missed, what actions may be relevant to you or possible for you to undertake, or whether they could be adapted to be relevant to the work you do. If it isn't relevant, skip it. Any actions that resonate or ideas that come up as you go through this checklist, pop them in green in section B of the worksheet. Task four, power mapping. So you've just been through a whirlwind of potential actions and hopefully considered how some of these prompts might be altered to suit your needs, work and practice. But now it's time to start prioritizing. So you should have a mess of green, red and orange notes in section B. Take a look at just the green notes. In section C, move each green note into these different areas. If it's something you're already doing, pop it down in the area entitled, I am already doing. If it's an action you have the power to enact now or in the short term, write it in the area, I can do. If the solution or action requires extra expertise, funding or capacity, then write it in the area, I can do but also need. As you write these down, jot down exactly what you would need to make these happen in orange. If the action feels entirely outside of your control or possibility, pop them down in the not possible right now section. As you do this, reflect on what resonates with you, feels exciting or doable. This should categorize the actions into what you're already doing, what is possible now and what is possible in future, alongside your needs to make these things happen. More often than not, I found undertaking this exercise, people have integrated a lot of environmentally responsible actions without even noticing. And it's great to have these written down on paper. Celebrate your wins. Task five, prioritizing. The final activity is all about creating your own timescales for action. But again, you don't want to oversubscribe yourself. First of all, think of opportune time periods to integrate new practices into your work, or consider where you have time to think, test, and try new things. Is it year to year? Is it project to project? Write down two timescales in section D, one nearer in the future and one further down the line. Take a look at all of those green actions mapped out in section C. What excites and resonates with you? What, if you do now, will build space for longer term change? And what requires more thought, time or resources? Is there a goal or endpoint you're working to? 
I would suggest writing down two green actions for the nearer term and two for the longer term. But if something else has come up for you or the way that you work, take that forward. What feels relevant and doable? This is about figuring out what is actually feasible within your capacity, resource and power, not oversubscribing yourself. If you have a dream goal that has arisen throughout this process, which feels like a stretch, but something to work towards, write that down as well. You should now hopefully have a few manageable actions to take forward within the timescales you have defined. And if not, hopefully this exercise has supported you in mapping out where you might want to act in future or where you are already doing the work. Thanks for sticking with me. I hope some of these prompts have been useful to kickstart thinking around doable climate action. If you have any thoughts or feedback on this process, any successful actions you have tried and want to share or add, do comment down below. Thank you so much. Remember to check out the Bristol & Bath Creative R&D website for the full toolkit and good luck.